This paper is about the potential difference between what is said about SRI and what is done. In the beginning of our project, we had the uh, intuition uh, that maybe there could be a difference between what asset managers could say about their funds. I, I, I mean, um, what they, their announcements, the mutual funds marketing, and, and the difference be, with the mutual funds actual uh, re, uh, realized investments, mutual funds holding. So this is a quite empirical paper, so I'm gonna spend um, um, some time about explaining uh, the data and the model. Um, I'm gonna skip this slide because we all know what uh, SRI is about. In the literature, uh, we have most of empirical papers about the financial impact of SRI, and they focus on the comparison of these performances between two categories of portfolio, between the conventional and socially responsible mutual funds. These this performances are estimated via several methodologies since uh, the, the early literature in the 90s. The thing is, all these empirical results hardly converge through geographical and time samples. So we have a consensus now that emerged from the empirical literature that ethical concerns would have a negative or non-significant impact on financial performances. So to be more exhaustive, since the 90s, we had a, a, a myriad of empirical papers describing the uh, the comparison of, perform of performances in the US, in Europe, in Asia, etc., through the world, with, uh, with different methodologies. Um, thing is, even today, the, the consensus about uh, empirical uh, analysis hardly converge. So, as I just said, um, towards the idea that there is uh, no significant impact of extra financial criteria on the financial performance of mutual funds. So the, one of the uh, theoretical contribution to this literature was uh, Bolens with his multi-attribute utility function. We have so uh, U as a utility function. S is an indicator uh, proxying if the, the investor has ethical concerns or not. So one if yes, zero if not. Omega is a cursor defined, defined between zero and one. And the central part is uh, uh, models of financial utility. And as anticipated by uh, the famous paper of uh, Fama in French, the author on paper shows that extra financial actuary should lower portfolio performances. So the thing is, uh, there is a, a, a debate with some more recent papers. I'm thinking about Statman's paper uh, published three years ago about the, the pertinence of the categorization of conventional and socially responsible mutual funds. In France, in France we had the French, re, the French regulator who published a, a report defining SRI as a polymorphous and involving concept that is sometimes difficult to understand. So, our idea is to understand if, uh, to study if SRE label or announcements really signals that a mutual fund behaves ethically, or if it only constitutes a pure marketing strategy. If it is the case, it could explain, at least in part, the, diff the difference in empirical studies. Some empirical studies find that uh, ESG criteria could be an added value for the financial performance of the fund, and other studies found that, on the contrary, it is a penalty that ethics has a cost. So, we are going to have two steps. The first step is a, premier, is a preliminary study. We are just look, looking. We are just uh, looking at the, the difference of the distribution of the de facto SRI rating. And in the second look, we're going to have a more sophisticated econometric approach with, um, with a, pan with a non-linear balance panel. 
So what we want to, to, to find is uh, we have two density functions. The blue one would be uh, the distribution of SRI rating, so the true ESG performance of mutual funds, of conventional mutual funds. And we guess that if the DURE, the DURE, the, the, I'm sorry, the true SRI funds, see if asset managers don't lie about their, soci their socially responsible mutual funds, the distribution of their, of, of their SRE rating will be on the right side. If it is not the case, we would have a huge overlap between ratings. I mean by this that if we were looking only at the mutual funds holding, we would not be able to know if it is a conventional or socially responsible mutual fund. As you have made guess, we, we will, um, I'm going to show you that we are, we are in the second case. So about the data. In this study, we focus on domestic equity mutual funds uh, in Europe and in the US. We impose some constraints to, uh, to, to, to compare uh, things that are comparable. We impose to have uh, the same geographical area for investments, the same currency, and an SRI, the de facto rating, uh, available. For this, Uh, de facto SRI score, we have two uh, data providers. We have Morningstar. Uh, Morningstar Sustainability Ratings provides uh, an SRI score, an ESG scores, and ESNG and controversy scores. We use uh, the newly available MSCI ESG fund metrics. These two providers uh, help us to have uh, fund level scores and we use Bloomberg uh, for the next part of the paper where, uh, where we have to define if asset managers use marketing to define their mutual funds as SRI or not. Our final database includes more than uh, 1,500 uh, mutual funds. So for the dummies to determine who is Uh, who is SRI de jure and who is SRI de facto. Uh, about SRI announcements, first, uh, we want to, to know what uh, asset managers tell themselves or what they, uh, and, and when they use uh, um, label agencies. So we build two dummy variables from Bloomberg and Novetic, Novetic for, for Europe only. So the dummy for the label, one if yes, zero if not. And about the name, the dummy is equal to one if the name of the mutual fund includes targeted words like green, responsible, etc. I'm going to talk about the dictionary uh, on the slide after this one. And zero if not. In the end, we have a balanced panel with, with uh, two dummy about the DURE SRI. So, about the dictionary we built, the first dictionary we used was the one built by Lovesinger and Varma, and including uh, 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 around 10 words. Uh, we go further uh, with the paper All is in the name of uh, Coupernal and Espenlobe. Uh, we, we, we show that um, investors are irrationally affected by comestic effects. So as investors, uh, as names of mutual funds are very important for, for investors, we built a dummy variable, a DURE SRI dummy variable, to identify funds that present them, themselves as SRI or ESG. So uh, using uh, the lexical database of uh, Princeton, WorldNet, we have identified uh, nearly 20 keywords, like Baptist, blue, carbon, Catholic, human rights, impact, uh, moral, peace, etc. And if the name of a mutual fund includes one of these keywords, we consider that this mutual fund is announced as SRI. Okay? 
So we have two demi, a demi for the DURE uh, SRI, and the second one, the last one, about the de facto SRI. We use, uh, as I told you before, Morningstar's Invisibility Rating and MSI the ESG Fund Metrics, uh, as in the recent paper just published by Art Mark and Sussman in Journal of Finance. So these two ratings uh, are not about uh, announcements or labels or marketing. Um, they are about uh, qualitative and quantitati quantitative scores for Morningstar and 100% uh, quantitative for MSCI, they measure, they, they measure the, the ESG exposure, the ESG performance of a fund only regarding uh, mut the mutual funds holding. So we have two demi, one about what is said, what about what is done. So about the performances, we took monthly returns of mutual funds, we extract the data from Bloomberg uh, data about factors uh, I extracted from a Kenneth French website. We have uh, a little section bias we control. I'm going to talk about it in the robustness check. We exclude only 8% of the US mutual funds and 11% of Europe mutual funds. And about the survivorship bias, because we, we cannot use CRISP for, US, for, for the US and, and um, and, blue, and returns from Bloomberg for, the, for Europe, it will, it will not be comparable. So we, we built for, uh, for five years time sample, uh, a unique survivorship BS3 sample of US and European mutual funds. So, and again, we focus on domestic equity mutual funds. So about the model, uh, it's not pretty. The first, the first equation is quite simple. It's just the, the four factors the augmented KPM of, um, of CART. And the thing is, we don't estimate it uh, as with the cross-section uh, cross methodology, uh, but we use a balanced panel. Okay, so we have, uh, uh, that's why we have indices I and T. And we have a fixed effect for each mutual fund and each month. Uh, the purpose is um, to, have, uh, to, to avoid a two steps estimation that could introduce a bias. In the second equation, uh, we introduce a non-linearity. I mean, here is how we use our DURE SRI de me. It is uh, it should be the one conventional, and we have the other, and we have the other demi, uh, one S SRI. There's this big equation uh, actually is only activated for one side. If the mutual fund I is is a, is announced as a conventional one, so the demi is equal to one, and the left part of the equation is like active. If the, if the fund is uh, a, a, a real, um, is a de jure, is announced as a SRI fund, the, the right part uh, of the equation is active. Uh, there, is, there are some non-linear econometric issues. My co-author Bertrand Candelon should be uh, could better speak about it than me. But the thing is, uh, Hansen in 2000 uh, published a paper in Econetrica showing that actually the estimation will be more accurate if um, instead of estimating uh, the left part and the right part of the equation, uh, we, est uh, we estimate uh, instead uh, the world part of the equation and the right part of the equation. That's why we have on the equation five, the third one, uh, we, have, uh, we have no dummy anymore for the, for the first part because we estimate the overall model. And then we just have the, the plus one SRI, the dummy, the DURE SRI. So for the mutual funds who, who are presented 
as SRI, and we introduce uh, at the end of the equation alpha SRI SRI. It is uh, we we want to estimate in the same time the coefficient of the de jure, the, the de facto rating. I mean, we want to estimate in the same equation the financial impact of, of announcing that the fund is SRI and the, the de facto uh, rate SRI. What we want to know if our intuition is that only saying that the fund uh, is SRI has, has no cost. Uh, maybe some cost about marketing or about buying a label, but that's all. But if you introduce ESG criteria, uh, it's actually an, uh, an additive constraint of, uh, in your optimization, and uh, at least uh, the, um, the performance will be negatively uh, impacted. So we estimate this balance panel via uh, an OLS, as in recent papers. Here's the first look. So this is actually the, the main results. Our intuition was true. There is a big, uh, a huge overlap between um, the funds, between what they say and what is done. I mean, if you, uh, so you have Europe mutual funds on the left part. In the uh, graph on the left side, we have the two density functions of the European mutual funds. Uh, in gray, on the left side, we have the density uh, functions of de facto rating of conventional mutual funds. So, and the other density functions is the density function of SRI rating, so de facto rating, of de jure, I don't know if you see very well the graphs. So, so. And on the, on the right side, we have the density functions of the de jure SRI mutual funds. That means that actually, if I don't tell you uh, which is the de jure conventional or which is the de jure SRI, if you're just looking at mutual funds holding, it's hard to say which one is the, SRI, is the socially responsible one. In the US, we have the same results. So this is the first big result, maybe for me the, the biggest one. There is a, a, a weak coherence between what is said and what is done about SRI. Then, what we want to estimate is the impact of de jure SRI and de facto SRI. So uh, some descriptive statistics as we cannot just uh, look at uh, density function and speak about it, we, uh, we, uh, here is a, a scheme. We estimate a threshold uh, using uh, COVAR analysis. So we have four categories. We have categories AB for conventional mutual funds and CD for de jure SRI mutual funds. Uh, in, uh, Group A has the conventional mutual funds with like a not very, a not very good uh, SRI rating, and B are the conventional mutual funds with a high de facto SRI rates. For CD, it, 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 it is the same thing. And what we want to compare is this. If we compare uh, mutual funds, ESG performance, de facto performance only, only regarding the de jure. We took A, B, and C, D. The conventional mutual funds and the de jure SRI mutual funds. We can see that the de jure SRI mutual funds, funds that, mutual funds that are announced to be ethical, have very good performances compared to, to conventional mutual funds. But if we compare not clusters about what is said, but clusters about what is done, we have the, the opposite results. I mean, when you compare AC and BD, and we have the same results for, for, the, for Europe and for the US. The, the, the mutual funds that have a good de facto SRI, uh, SRI rating has, has, a, has a cost on, on financial performance. So. Now, 
the panel approach. So um, this, this result, so as I said, it is equation uh, three, if I remember well, just we estimate in a balanced panel uh, the, the KPM, the four factors KPM, where so uh, alpha is negative and not, and not significant, so market are efficient, that's a good news. We have a beta um, uh, uh, that is equal uh, to one, highly significant, and we have fund and time fixed effect. Okay, so it's just for the for a first look, and then here is the main results. We compare here the financial impact of the DURE SRI of announcements. As you can see, uh, it is in the second. Uh, in the second position in the table with alpha, S, beta, S, etc. These coefficients are not all significant. We can see that the market risk exposure uh, does not change significantly. So that what we can say is that the uh, announcements about uh, ethics, etc., marketing and labels does not affect uh, marginally affects the financial performance of mutual funds. However, when we look at the coefficient of the alpha SRI, the de facto SRI, the coefficient is negative and significant. That means that, that confirms that actually, saying, speaking about ethics, about uh, peace, about uh, keywords we, we found, uh, has, no, has, has no cost. I mean, if there is a cost or cost, it is a marginal cost. But if you use EEG criteria in, uh, in the portfolio management, there, there is a cost. Uh, some of you could uh, note that the alpha becomes positive and significant. Uh, it is because actually uh, there is an interference due to the model specification between the alpha SRI and the alpha we call alpha star. But if we, if you want to estimate the true alpha, uh, like not the Jensen alpha, but the Carhartt alpha, you have to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to additionate these two coefficients and you have a negative and significant alpha. So we have some robustness checks. First of all, uh, we had a lot of comments about uh, the data provider, so we replicate our study using Morningstar and MSCI for the SRI de facto demi. We found that in US and in Europe, we have the same results. We have an alpha SRI that is negative and highly significant. We use and we, we have another another assumption and so another business checks. In the main part of our paper, we have to use a static rating because we want to have the, uh, an, an historical time sample, the longer we can, and we compare results using both static and dynamic results. We have uh, a negative and significant alpha SRI and the USA is not significant. So for static and dynamic, in the end, to, uh, to sum up, what we do is we show that, first of all, there is a big difference between what is said and what is done about SRI, and we show that only what is done about SRI has a cost, a financial cost on financial management. To the end, an information asymmetry emerged in the SRI market from investor difficulty to identify the true nature of mutual funds and to evaluate their performance conditional to the SRI classification. And then regulators should promote a better harmonization in scoring and marketing to reduce this information asymmetry and to allow a be uh, better, um, uh, to, 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 to allow this market to be more efficient. Thank you for your, for your attention.